So I tried a newer, easier method to solving quadratic equations. This method is known as the Po Shin Lo method for the mathematician that's been all over the news proclaiming how amazing it is. Take a look. Well, in this episode, we're going to put this method to the test and see whether or not it's really all it's cracked up to be or whether it's just good for certain problems and not others. Before we get started, I'll let you know my opinion. I find that for more simplistic problems, this method is very good and useful and in fact, is quicker than the normal traditional methods of the quadratic formula or factor you're using guessing tests. However, once the problems get more complicated, so does this procedure. And well, I'll let you decide. Let's get started with the problems. We'll start off with an easy problem. X squared minus 14X plus 40. Using the post low method, we have these two rules. Rule number one, find the average value for the B value. In other words, use the formula negative B over two plus or minus Z. The result from this leads to rule two, products. As stated on this site, solve for Z by setting the product of the two values found in A equal to C. A better way of looking at this is with the example that we were given. X squared minus 14 X plus 40. Our B value is negative 14 and our C value is positive 40. Using the formula negative B over two gives us an equation of seven plus Z and seven minus Z as you see here. Following step two, we'll see the product of these two factors, which is going to be 49 minus Z squared. Then we gotta set it equal to C, in this case, positive 40. So 49 minus Z squared equals 40. Doing a little creative math, we see that Z squared equals nine or Z equals plus or minus three. We add that and subtract it to our initial factor of seven plus Z and seven minus Z, leaving us with terms of positive 10 and positive four. That is our answer. As you can see on screen, using the guess and test, we come up with the same exact answer. Yeah, that's it, positive 10 and positive four. The inverse of the factors is negative 10 and negative four. So far, so good. The method works here. Now let's take it up a notch. Let's try another problem. Four X squared plus 17 X minus 15. The solution is going to be put on screen using the motion low method. If you look at it, this method appears to break down almost as soon as it starts, leaving us with values that have decimal points in it. I mean, we followed all the rules. We took the formula, negative B over two plus or minus Z and found factors. That just happened to be negative 17 over two plus Z and negative 17 over two minus Z, leaving us with an equation like what you see here. To make life easy, I turned 15 to a fraction. 60 over 4 equals 15. Even so, you're left with an equation of 289 over 4 plus 60 over 4 equaling z squared. Solving that out, you're left with 349 over 4 equaling z squared. Taking the square root of that leaves you with a pretty ugly fraction, as you see here. Then, we're not done yet. The values found to z have to be added to the 17, negative 17 and a half, and subtracted from the negative 17 and a half, leaving us with what you see here. Now, I used the quadratic formula on the same problem and in half the time I got a more concise sweeter shorter answer which I'm 100% sure is correct that result is displayed on screen the answers using that method are 3 4 and 5 so you can see in this method if all the stars are on a line or if the value of A does not go neatly into the values of B and C this method gets really ugly really fast so I'm not quite sure if it's the cure all or the miraculous easier way that the media is making it out to be but I throw it to you I let you decide look at this problem did I do something wrong comment below let me know I want to try one more problem of the same type but this time the value of a still bigger than one goes neatly into all of the rest of the values i.e. B and C. Using the post and low method for the problem of 6x squared minus 48x minus 54, I get final answers of nine and negative one, as you can see displayed in front of you. Using gets and tests, I also get the answers of nine and negative one. But with this problem, the six went neatly into the 48 and the 54, allowing me to break down the problem into a simpler trinomial that you could just as easily solve in the same amount of time using gets and tests or the quadratic formula or any other method. So I'm not quite sure what the big deal is with this method. Yes, it's fast 
and it can be faster, but not by much. It's minimal. Is it a new and interesting way? Yeah, but take it from me. I teach this stuff. I'm not sure if it's a game changer that the media is making it out to be. Mainly because I found that the problem students have is less so with understanding the math than actually wanting to understand the math. The moment they see fractions, and in some cases, in some of these examples I was doing, you actually get complex numbers or imaginary numbers. It can make things a lot more confusing and complicated for the average person. But I throw it out to you. I'm only a knowledge guy, you know? In my opinion, it's an okay method. The potion low method of solving quadratic equations. But do some. I'll attach a worksheet of quadratic equations, more advanced, complex ones, to in the description below. You try it out, see if this method helps you out. Just remember the steps, there's basically two steps. You wanna find the average of B, or negative B over two, plus or minus Z, get that into factor form, multiply it, and set it equal to your C value. That will give you a Z value that you can add and subtract to your factor to get your actual answers, or zeros. Let me know in the comments below. I'm a knowledge guy, and I'll see you next time.